So welcome to She Believes in Her Abilities. My name is Holly Linval. I'm the Vice President of Human Resources for the Mets. And I'm here to remind you today that you can achieve all of your goals, and I mean all of them. And it's all about your commitment to the goals that you, commitment to the goals that you set. Goal mapping is a process that consists of three different steps. It's self-discovery, it's reflecting, and it's taking action. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Hopefully these steps will help you. Welcome back, everybody. You have enough room? There's seats up here. Slide down. OK, good. <clears throat> Creating an action plan to make sense of your personal and professional goals will help you make sure that you're ready for that career transition when you're nearing the end of your time in school. So I know it's a proven fact that athletes make great employees. I know this from reading about it. I know this because I have one who works on my business team. Claire Bennett's here. She was a two-time athlete in college playing soccer and lacrosse. And what athletes have that others don't are the stories to back up statements like, I'm a great team player, I'm resilient, I have confidence. And learning how to use those skills to verbalize those on your resume and in interviews is what's going to set you apart from, your, from everybody else. So we're going to start a process of self-discovery. In the folders that you have, you have something called a SWOT analysis. Has anybody ever heard of that? OK, great. So a SWOT analysis is something that was developed to help people in business, as they were launching onto a project, organize your thoughts. But it's equally important for all of you around the table to take some time in self-discovery to identify your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. And we're going to talk about that today. For everybody in the room that are still in school, this is really the, your ideal time for self-discovery. The more time that you spend getting to know yourself, what makes you happy, what makes you excited, will make sure that when you're ready for your career transition, you go after it with all that you have. So let's spend a few minutes talking about our self-discovery. So you have the piece of paper in front of you. Let's take three minutes. Can you think of some strengths that you have and write those in the box? You might be asking questions in your head. What is the strength? What am I great at? What do others say that you're great at? What have you learned from sports? What have you learned from school? Take a couple minutes to write those things down. Yes. So let's move over to your next box. How can I improve and what do I need to work on? Where do you lack experience or skills? What are they and why are they lacking? Maybe think about some recent feedback you've received. Something to put in that box. Next, let's talk about opportunities. Who or what can help you along your journey? Who do you know in your network? Who did you meet this morning that you could connect with? What did you hear during the panel when we were in the general session? Where can you go to find mentors and sponsors?
And lastly, let's think about what might be standing in your way. What are you up against? What do others have that you don't? What resources do you need to make you ready? Who thought this exercise was totally overwhelming? Anybody? A little bit? So if we start now and we continue to practice along the way, it will get easier and easier. Does anybody want to share some of their strengths with the group? What's the story in your head? Great. You want to stand up so we can hear you? Anybody else? I know you all have great strengths. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? I'm a good listener, great. Let's talk about your weaknesses. I'll start off with mine. I am struggling with technology. I don't know how to do, make an Instagram story, and I am getting further and further behind with my Excel skills at work. So I need to work on those things. Anybody else have weaknesses that they feel? Yes, thank you. That was really brave. Thank you for sharing. Hopefully we'll talk about some tips to help help you with that. Yes. Thanks for sharing. That's great. Great. Yes. And so what are some steps do you think you can take to turn that around into a strength? Great. Saying no quickly is much better than taking a long time to say no, which is something that I've learned uh, throughout the last couple years, that delivering bad news quickly is a lot easier than waiting to say no to a commitment. That's great. Anybody else? Okay, so let's talk about opportunities. Anyone have an opportunity? Who could you reach out to for mentorship or sponsoring? Who can help you? Yes. Thanks for coming. <laughs> So what are some action steps you can take after you leave here today to follow up on why you're feeling inspired? Great. So some of the way, anyone have a suggestion on how to contact Julie Foudy? Joan?
you can do it. Good. Anybody else have opportunities they wanted to share? No? Threats that you want to talk about? You have some over here. Excellent. Go ahead. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. You ha did you want to share yours too? Age. Yep. And so all of this also is about the story that you're telling yourself in your head. So you're hearing yourself say, I'm too young, or I don't have enough experience. It's all about shaping the story to sound different in your head so that you can move forward and achieve the things that you want to do. Make sense? And so that leads us into talking about reflecting. Who at the table has Snapchat or Instagram account? Everybody. Who at the table has a LinkedIn account? Great. Who's checked their LinkedIn account in the last month or log on to your app? Great. And so when you're there, what kind of people are you searching for to connect with? Go ahead. Other people who are involved in sports? Other people who know people that you know? Great. Anybody else? What about alumni from the schools that you attend? Do you know alumni and where they are in their careers? Yes, you're not in your head. Do you want to give an example? Perfect. So did everybody hear Andy? So Andy said, I don't want to personally go into finance, but lots of my roommates do. And that's how you start to begin and utilize your network. So everybody in this room can start to utilize people that you met today. You can start to utilize people that you've met on the panel. And throughout the day, I want you to keep this in your head. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is keeping a career journal. So there's another uh, page in your packet. And I wish I had received this advice when I was a freshman in college. So this is a template that you can use when you're going through a class project or you meet with a professor. You attend a seminar like you do today. If you take the time to sit back and reflect on what you're hearing and the action steps moving forward and you write it down, then later when you need further inspiration or you're feeling burnt out or you want to make connections with people, you'll have this journal with you. So I thought we could take a few minutes and think about the panel you heard this morning or about Julie Foudy and what she had to say and take some time to reflect about that message and any action items that you want to take away from what you've heard this morning. So I'm going to give you four minutes to give that some thought. How are we doing in our reflections? Is anybody ready to share something that they wrote down from what you heard this morning that you want to take action on? Andy? Um, I, I guess um, she kind of talked a little bit about um, to not, like, not being afraid of the future and the unknown, which is something I know I struggle with a lot. Um, and to not necessarily like trust the process, but make sure you can you can come up with ideas on your own to kind of move yourself forward and come up with like certain timelines and events um, to make it seem more manageable. I think it's really what I wrote down. Thanks for sharing. So, how do you think you can come up with some of those timelines to make it more manageable for yourself?
Great. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else have action steps from what you heard this morning? Okay, hi, I'm Marissa. I play soccer at William Patterson University. Um, so for me, for the meeting, what I got out of it was like finding what really makes you happy. Like I'm an accounting major, but like I love soccer and I love sports. I've been doing it all my life. So something that like I want to do when I grow up and um, gain experience with is like, you know, staying with sports. Like I want to do something like working with like a semi-pro team or something. Like this summer, I'm trying to get an internship with Sky Blue and do like the finances for the team. So like, it's combining like something I like, which is like doing math and accounting and finances, but also something I've done my whole life, which is soccer, so. Thank you for sharing. Nice. Anybody else want to share? So as when you go back to school and you complete a class project or you have a meeting with your professor, part of what's going to set you ahead and help you achieve your goals is being able to verbalize the things that you learn. So what you're doing on the field and in the classroom all have real life value as long as you can find your words around it. So keeping something in a career journal where you're writing down your thoughts, you're writing down both what you love and what you didn't love will help as you're thinking through the next steps to make it to your career transition. Anybody have any questions? No? Okay. So next let's talk about the idea of taking action. So I know from interviewing a lot of athletes that many of you are spending all of your summers playing sports as opposed to being able to have internships like some of your peers. Does that resonate with anyone in the room? Yes? Okay, good. So how can you turn your athletic career into making a really awesome resume? Anybody have any ideas? Okay, I know that this is tough to see, but I'm happy to send these to anybody who wants to reach out to me after the conference. Part of it is about turning your athletic skills into things on your resume that demonstrate your leadership, your teamwork. And so this woman uh, played basketball at Hofstra. You can see she was a conference champion, and she used her experience here on, the re on her resume to demonstrate the same or similar skills you might gain through an internship when she was applying for jobs after school. Here's another example, swim varsity dive team. I managed 40 hours of practice in addition to a full load of career classes, and here's what I did on the field that's representative of what you're looking for in an office environment. How are your resumes looking? Do you have athletics up at the top? No. Do you want to ask me any questions about this? Applying for jobs, how to market yourself on a resume? What questions do you have? Yes. My question is, so like I also have athletics on my resume, but I struggle with finding a way to know the things that I've done in the program that is that because you because we as women don't want to say that we're awesome or is it finding the right words what do you know that you've done that you're hesitant to put on there not that I like hesitate to certain things but I feel like I'm not sure what to put so why don't you stand up and introduce yourself and give me your 20 second elevator pitch around your around your athletic skills and what you've done so far in school. You can do it. <laughs> Don't say that. Uh, hello. My name is Anae Collins. I play soccer for Rutgers University in New York. Um, and what is, I'm a captain for our 2018 squad. And one of the biggest passions I have as captain, because the Rutgers New York team program, I should say, is not as established as others in our conference, is changing the culture to be not just more competitive, but to be a real um, threat. Give her a big round of applause. Whew. 
so what I heard you say was you're a captain, you're a leader on the team, you're trying to change culture, you're a change agent, you're managing a full load of schoolwork. Yes. All in the time while you're motivating your team to be a threat in the conference. So how can you find those words to put on your resume? That's exactly what I think you were asking and what, what you need to be proud of to do to do that. Anybody else have questions about this? You said you didn't have athletics on your resume. Is that because you don't play? Great, and what sport do you play? At Rutgers, with your captain here, yes. And so one thing you could do too when you leave today is tell her what skills about her that you admire to help her think about her strengths and write her resume. Will you do that for me? Okay, good. Will you do the same for your teammates? Okay, good. I'm proud of you. So I think it depends. If you're thinking, if you're managing and you're, you're having summer internships and you're gaining leadership experience through outside organizations and you have places to put that on your resume, great. If there are things that you're doing on the field that you're proud of, which you should, there are ways to highlight that on your resume there. Anybody have any other questions? Yes. Everybody here. It's tough. Here you go. This is good. So I am a first year in college, but and I played um, like varsity athletics all through high school. But I'm not doing varsity athletics in college. So maybe how do you make like being a three sport captain like in high school relevant? Like especially like on your first year application versus like playing if I'm only playing like intramural sports and club sports in college. So you're not only playing intramural and club sports in college. You are, and you should feel proud of that. And if you're developing your first year resume, I think it's okay to put something like this on your resume, that you were a three-sport athlete in high school, that you managed a full load of classes, plus however many hours a week that you spent practicing and still managed to make the honor roll or still managed to do extra curricular activities, um, all of those things are you should be very proud of and that's the story that you need to continue to play for yourself in your head. And then as you gain more experience and, and you have those um, outside internships or positions over the summer, then some of that stuff can start to drop off on the bottom as you're moving forward. Make sense? Yes. Well, cycling is a little weird because it's not really like a collegiate sport. Cycling? Yeah. Okay. So how do you notate like division five, like category five races? Like how do you notate that? I don't know how to. What's the story you're telling in your head about uh, your cycling at school? You want to give us your 20 second Oh, um, I cycle for a club in Miami, which is called uh, Girls Gone Cycling. So it's an all-female cycling group because in cycling they, it's, they have like a lot of deficiencies with women that you only see men so there's like you want to do since your sport is special is make sure that you list on that there that you're on the women's cycling team and then write a little sentence underneath about what exactly that means just like you said in your elevator pitch write down your time commitment your leadership to that does that help okay and and the skills that you're learning so I'm pushing myself from goal setting I'm going to practice while I'm going to school whatever some of those other activities might be. Okay, so we are at the point where we can open it up to questions, whether it's about goal setting, whether it's about your career journal, whether it's about 
your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis. What kind of advice can I give you while we have five more minutes together? Yes. You want here. Can you tell us a little bit about like your journey and like what you're doing and how you like that? And Okay, so my journey is different from all of you. I played basketball in high school, and I sat the bench all four years. I never got into a game. But I loved being part of a team. I loved the women that I played with. I loved the hard work. I'm better when I'm busy. Uh, so I believe that that, has, that love of team has led me to love my career at the Mets. Being in sports, being on a team, uh, being in an environment that rallies around the blue and orange at all times. I was patient with myself. I have always loved working. So I graduated from college. I have a psychology degree. Back in those days, there weren't any jobs online. You just went through the newspaper and found something that looked interesting to you. And being an HR manager of a hotel was something that interested me, and I applied. And that's how I started my career. I worked for the next 15 years in the hotel business, um, most recently at a private equity firm that managed uh, 50 hotels across the nation. And then when I was looking for a career change, I answered a blind posting on LinkedIn. So it said, looking for someone to run an HR department in a sports media entertainment company. I thought, oh, that's kind of fun. I love sports. I've always been a fan. So I sent in my resume, Blind Hope. And two months later, I get a phone call back saying, uh, we know that you applied for this sports management role. Do you want to come in and interview? But we can't tell you who it's for. Huh, that's interesting. We want to have a Skype interview. Um, so I did that. I went out and I bought a video cam from my house and a headset. I didn't have any of that stuff. Um, thought that it was a minor league team, a baseball team in Connecticut, because I couldn't imagine something as great as the Mets coming across my desk. Sometimes even when you're long, far into your career, you still have those stories that you need to reverse in your head to think that you do deserve a seat at the table. I found out it was the Mets. They had interviewed 35, 40 people and hadn't found the right person to lead their HR department. I had two interviews. Everybody said, don't go work in sports. You're a woman. You're never going to make it. It's the worst environment you could possibly be in. But something kept saying, I need to take this risk. I need to give it a try. So I did. Uh, and now five years later, it's the coolest thing that I could have ever done. I love the change. I love the culture. I love the team environment. And so that's how my career led me here. Thanks for the question. How did you combat the um, negative uh, influence that people were like s saying to you when you were going to take the job with the Mets? So the question was, how did I combat the negative things that people were saying uh, to just follow my goals or follow my dreams and do it? Um, I think that's a great question. I just kept saying, I bl there's something about this that sounds so cool. Uh, there's something about this that I just have to try. And I knew that I had the skills that if it didn't work out, that I could go do something else. So I was patient and forgiving with myself in that self-talk to know I'm going to try it. And if it doesn't work out, I'll do something different. Um, but I'm also somebody that, in the face of a challenge, wants to prove everybody wrong. And so when they were saying, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing this, it made me think, oh, now I really have to do it. And so I think that was part of the motivation around me arriving where I am today. So thanks for the question. Yep. What other questions do you have? Does anybody have any questions for Claire? Who's earlier on in her career, but working at the Mets, too, as a former athlete? Ooh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Wait, what do you do, like, at the Mets? 
So, like, how did you, like, get into that position, I guess? Like, what were your, like, network connections there? Claire has a really, really good story. Here you go. So, I guess I grew up playing soccer my whole life. That was, you know, like, you guys. I see myself and you guys is really cool to be a part of. Um, I knew I wanted to work in sports just for the team environment of it. I thought that was so cool. If you're going to go to work every day, why not go somewhere as cool as working for sports, like you were saying before with Sky Blue. Um, and I was a psychology major. I knew I liked kind of being on a team and um, what motivates people and how people work together on a team. I thought I could apply that to business. Um, I interned at Major League Soccer, their league headquarters, for a year after college in HR. Um, didn't really know what HR was, but you know, like I said, thought it would be a good fit. Um, and then I answered a job application um, for the Mets. Um, I got there and they had already hired someone for that role, but I met with Holly um, and we, you know, I knew she had extra work to do and we really hit it off and she said, okay, I still have work for you. Can you start tomorrow? Um, so I started tomorrow. Um, she said, I can only promise you three months. I said, okay. And so that was four years ago. So it was just kind of, um, making, you know, working hard and, and taking that opportunity, which didn't really look that great on paper, um, but just kind of making the most of it. Does that help? Okay. The other thing I'll tell you about Claire's story, so it's all about networking. When we have a position open at the Mets, we can have anywhere between 800 and 1,000 people apply for an internship or an entry-level role. And I'll be honest with you, most of the time we don't get through all 1,000 applicants. What happens is people who know people say, please go and find this person's resume and have them be part of the interview process. So Claire was one of those people too. Her sister works in sports. Her sister knew Paul Asensio, who was one of our senior executives, who said, can you look at this resume because Allie's sister is applying? And so I'm not sure without Claire's network and the way that she built up through her sister and the things that she had been doing, that Claire and I would have ever met one another. So when we talk about LinkedIn and we talk about the people that you meet along your journey and why that's important, this is a great example of how networking will help you find the right thing when you're ready to, to interview for your first internship or you're going out to look for your first career. Good questions. Anybody else? Okay, so this is the end of our session. And as you leave, I want you to go out and believe in yourself, be forgiving with the story that you have in your head and, and use the tools that we talked about today. Go back six months from now and look at your strengths analysis. Every time you finish a class project, I encourage you to look at your career journal. After you attend events like this today, use your network to stay connected with the people that you'll meet today and continue that conversation. I'll be here the rest of the day and if there's anything I can do uh, to help you, that's why, that's why we got to meet today. So hope everyone has a great rest of the day. It was great to meet you. Have a good day. Good.